Welcome back for the fourth and final part. <coughs> First we have Griffin Sentinel, another pretty solid limited card, this is a bit more defensive, it's still okay in offensive decks, especially if you have ways to buff it, <coughs> but um, it's not that great if you are trying to be aggressive, I think. But uh, if your deck is more of a mid-rangey or even controlling draft deck, this seems like a pretty great uh, blocker. Next we have Inspire Charge, another great addition for an aggressive uh, white limited deck. So um, overall white looks pretty aggressive and fairly good at being aggressive in uh, the set so far. So um, yeah, Inspire Charge seems like uh, one of the big enablers and build arounds for an aggressive white deck and has been in the past. Next we have Inspired Captain, sort of a, a makeshift Inspired Charge, which is pretty nice because running too many Inspired charge, uh, Chargers can be awkward and have diminishing returns, but having more pseudo Inspired Chargers uh, virtually from a decent 4-drop uh, is a nice addition and also makes it much more swingy. It's sort of like a weaker version of the Angel in M19, the 5-drop Angel. So seems like there might be a similar Boros or other uh, type of color, white plus X, inspiring charge, inspiring captain, uh, aggro draft deck. Clearly not a constructed card though. Then we have Moment of Heroism, which is a pretty solid trick and also works as a decent defensive card in a, in a slower deck due to the lifelink, uh, doing double purpose there of being a situational trick as well as a way to help stabilize and uh, recoup some life total. But um, in an aggressive deck it's not that great. Um, only giving plus two plus two but costing two and lifelink being semi-irrelevant half the time is not that great. Next we have Moorland Inquisitor. It's just a bear. The fact that you can threaten to uh, give it first strike, first three mana is nice. You don't usually actually want to activate it, but it lets you attack into two toughness creatures uh, with impunity as if it had first strike, which is nice, I guess, but it's nothing special, I think. Gets a bit better with buffs, obviously, but three is just so much for first strike. Next we have Pacifism, another sort of throwback since in the past, like recent years, we only got like three cost Pacifisms usually. Cause Pacifism was considered too good in limited usually, so we are back to good old Pacifism. And I have to say, this is an amazing one, like I don't usually care much about artwork and don't comment much on artwork, but this one is just like hilarious. This brutal, massive... A giant that seems to have even like pigs hanging here and all these massive bones and like human shields as bracers is sort of like yeah making like knitting a blanket or some sort of thing with a heart on it uh, to yeah imply pacifism it's just an hilarious artwork and also um, with a very distinct drawing st uh, style of Jasper Ising. So yeah, it's a pretty awesome like looking card. Next we have Raise the Alarm. This is a pretty sweet one, uh, especially with all the like uh, buff stuff, Inspiring Charge and Captain in Limited. And even in Constructed, this is the kind of card that um, could be interesting. I don't think uh, White Weenie necessarily wants it, but I could see it like um, it is imaginable that in White Weenie you just kind of replace your 2-drop with this because it's so good at flipping landing and stuff, but it doesn't get buffed um, by history, which is unfortunate. But then again, so does neither of the other 2-drops, and it does get buffed by Loxodon and by um, Marshall, and it's particularly great for Loxodon, so it definitely seems interesting there. Um, so it could have constructed implications. It's also obviously great for Selesnia tokens if that's still capable of being a thing. Then we have Soul Mender, basically um, Ajani's Pride Mate's best friend. I don't think this is gonna be good enough in Constructed, but I don't know, maybe there is a like White Weenie style build with Soul Mender. The um, 
the cat one drop that gives you a health and pride mate, making pride mate a bit stronger than in the past. But soul mana just seems a bit too weak still. Um, every time you don't have pride mate, you're gonna hate having this card in your deck and so on. So unlikely. In limited, probably similar issues really, unless you have some synergies, have enough synergies where this matters, which I doubt you will realistically have. Then we have Squad Captain. This is pretty sweet, especially with stuff like Raise the Alarm. If this is like a 4-4 Vigilance, it's pretty solid, but not that great. But once it is a 5-5 Vigilance for 5, this seems this starts to look really good. And if you go like turn 2 Raise the Alarm and then play a creature on 3 on 4, um, even with a creature dying, this is going to be a 5-5. So this seems pretty strong. It's a bit slow for how aggressive white tendentially seems but it might not be the only archetype and even in the aggressive archetype having one or two of these as curve toppers can be a nice backup plan or something so it seems like a fairly strong uh, common or limited and then we have steadfast sentry this card seems actually pretty amazing like uh, three costs three twos have been kind of the norm these days vigilance makes them hard to be ignored which is nice and then also giving the plus one plus one counter just like the black uh, three cards three two in guilds of ravnica i forgot the name is pretty nice because the vigilance makes the plus one plus one counter on death so much better because the opponent cannot really um ignore it because if you attack and they don't block you're just gonna block if they attack so they can't attack or block which means they have to block if you attack uh, and trade and then you get the counter and then you get a lot out of this so this is one of the strongest like baseline commons three twos for three that i've seen in a while i think other than like uncommons and rares obviously that do more powerful things but for baseline three cost three two common i think this is really strong and seems great in an aggressive white deck uh, like i talked about before oh so yeah this is, seems like a pretty great uh, three drop common and last but not least we have yoked ox nothing exciting here even in limited this is kind of underwhelming but um, in the right deck this can be a thing as a one-off maybe in limited or at least a decent sideboard card against very aggressive opponents but all in all it's like more often than not draft chaff and also not a constructor card usually although there's this like very very different scenario where this ends up in a cyborg to help against like more red or white weenie or something but probably not all right this concludes um the review of the white cards i'll be back tomorrow with uh, the four parts of all the blue cards and so on and try to wrap the series in the next five days to yeah catch up on me being behind um, like I said, sorry, I'm pretty busy with preparing for Eternal Worlds and so on, so trying to juggle multiple things here. And theoretically, I should also go to university, you know. But I'm already flagging on that a lot. <laughs> All right. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review of White. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Hit the like button if you enjoy the content. Turn on the notifications to not miss out on the rest of the series. Also, comment, share with your friends, and of course, if you want to support me and my work, check the description down below. You can find infos on how to uh, support the content, among others. I have a patron set up by now, so maybe check that out. And of course, an easy way to support me is always to just turn off your ad block and check out the ads at the beginning and end of each video uh, to help support the content for free. All right. That's it again for this time. I'm your host, Manu S. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow with Blue. Bye.